What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brent Watches Babylon 5 for the first time today. I am in season five. This is episode seven, entitled Secrets of the Soul. My prediction, I am putting this out there into the universe. I am manifesting this. It is time to get back to Lanier. Time to get back to his story. Should have hit him a couple weeks ago. Perfect opportunity to bring him back. I don't know why they didn't, but it's time. We're going to check in with him. We're going to see what's going on in Ranger School. Yeah, that's what I really think is happening here with Lanier he's still in the intro he's still in the credits so he can't be gone right is that what really happens I have no idea I'm about to find out and you guys are gonna hang out with me while we find out together hey listen while you're here please do me a favor like subscribe share this video if you want the full unedited version head over to our patreon page that's patreon.com slash babylon 5 first where you can find the full unedited version of this video made for YouTube you can find the full unedited version of Jeff's video made exclusively for patreon you also can get things like access to our discord channel you can get access to a monthly hangout with jeff and i jeff and me i guess it would be you can become a producer in the show uh, all sorts of stuff get access to other fun content that we have going on out there so you guys make sure you definitely go over check all of that out here babylon 5 first and uh, with that let's go ahead and jump into this episode and hopefully no byron because yikes although he's probably all over this episode so well here we go how many of my brother and sister telepaths are coming? As many as want to. Yeah, well, Captain... ...is under orders from President Sheridan to allow us in. All right, go on. Come on, move, go, go. There does feel like there needs to be some sort of a limit. Lita, can I talk to you for a minute, please? Those guys are gonna be trouble. This yet. is you gonna be awkward. See, there's more going on here than they're telling us. Oh, here's Byron. Still acting like the Messiah. It's good to see you again, Peter. Oh, and Peter. You, Byron, I've been practicing a great deal since I saw you last. <laughs> so the rogue teeps are also very rogue good, teeps. Peter. Very, very good. You ever just want to punch somebody in their face? All right, pop quiz. I want you guys to answer this down in the comments. Who has a more punchable face, Byron or Morden? What the hell are you doing with those people? What? What people? Byron. The others. Those people are telepaths, same as me. I don't like it, and that Byron guy's the worst of the bunch. Byron yep. is a sweet, charming, sympathetic man who's trying to create a better world. He's trouble, and I don't think you should be seeing him anymore. Who said I was seeing him? The lead on head of security, I don't miss much. Right, right. So you've been spying on me? <sighs> didn't say that you're That's, jealous let me tell you what zach is talking to lita exactly the way that an ex-boyfriend would talk to his ex-girlfriend about her new boyfriend that's exactly how he's talking to her <laughs> it's i may recognize that from personal experience no questions after all that you had the nerve to ask me to risk my life a second time during the civil war back home and stupid me i did it and what did i get out of that nothing nada zip zilch i got no life no hope no prospects now along comes byron and for the first time in a long while i feel like someone actually cares about what happens to me i care what happens to you lita yeah well maybe that's true the talk is cheap zach byron is putting his life on the line to create Time out. you know she, she brings up some good points here she brings up some legitimate feelings i would say she did a lot for folks and she didn't get much out of it in return i think that is that is very true this also begs the question i think what do we owe to those who serve what do we owe to veterans what what, what is a community owe to its firefighters ems police what do students and parents owe to teachers what do churches and religious organ organizations what do the parishioners owe to their pastors or their priests the people that are living a life of service what do we owe more than what they've already gotten like what what do we owe I, like i think it's a legit question that should be be answered and, and we probably don't take care of them enough although it also occurs to me that lita is kind of showing exactly how i think people get mixed up in cults i don't have personal experience with that but well, i take that back uh, especially with cults of personality and certainly that is byron but it, it does show i think how grooming works it shows if you show somebody some attention you show them some love that they don't receive from elsewhere and then you turn things into an us versus them i mean listen she's talking that those are my people they're just like me i did all these things for you you give yourselves a, a tribe i think is kind of the buzzword or it has been in recent years tell them that personality tells them how that you are the one the the only one maybe who could save them and folks I, I i gotta tell you if you ever wake up one day and find that you've fallen for any of that then guess what you're in at least some sort of a cult and most people who are in it go this isn't a cult and that i do speak from personal experience so 
Anyway, he, to create something for his people. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I'm saying. You, you you divide those wedges, right? Speak to the places of need that have not been fulfilled. Be the answer to that. Create us first them. Lita, I mean, Lita's just fallen into this hook, line, and sinker. Would you build a home on a foundation you knew would not last? No, of course not. And why should we use the same tools of violence and fear that they use? But when they do this, doesn't it doesn't it make you mad? I mean, don't you want to strike back? Could you just, just, what's so funny? Do you know what you are? What? Adorable. A BCFMO. A brightly Please. colored, fast-moving object. You don't just walk into a room. You blaze in and blaze right, out. That is like lame. Comment. You know what that is? It's an LASC. Do you know that? A lame-ass, stupid comment. RBFOF. Really bad form of flirting. So dumb. A B B C C F O M. Oh my God. Stop smiling. Then go Stop away. Smiling. If you're here, I'm afraid I can't help myself. Oh. <sighs> There's nothing about this dude I trust. Not a thing. What am I going to do with you? She's going to kiss that I bloody lip. I wonder the same thing about you. Oh, when you figure it out, let me know. You first. There she is. I, I can see. Can you all see it? There's nothing about this guy to trust. Okay. Like I said, there's nothing about this guy that we trust, right? Thinking about that, though, this whole situation really brings into focus, into clarity, Lita. And something about her is that her judgment has also never really been trustworthy. I mean, think about it. She gets mixed up with Kosh and the Vorlons, and they change her. She lets them change her, fundamentally alter her. After Kosh dies, she allows the Vorlons to stay there and continually abuse her. And I, I don't want to make light of that because she definitely was a victim. She apparently at some point had something good going with Zach, but now she doesn't. And she's mixed up with this dude. And, you know, as for her complaints about being involved in the Earth stuff and, and in the, the galaxy thing, like, I kind of get what she's saying. She went to bat for the people during the Shadow War. She came back and did some stuff for the... For the Earth War. Um, but she got involved in the Earth Civil War because she's an Earthling. It's her Civil War too. That's where she's from. Just because she's a telepath, it doesn't mean she's not from Earth anymore. And the whole Shadow War thing that they used her, I think she said, or something of that nature, she certainly has that feel to it. She didn't get anything for it. Honey, you're a part of the galaxy. That was a, an existential crisis for the galaxy. That's all hands on deck. You don't get compensated for stuff like that. You do what you have to do to survive with everyone again i go back to my question earlier what do we owe to people who serve she certainly had a big part in both of those things is she owed something more because of what she was able to do not as a form of payment but as a really a form of thank you and i think she has a legit complaint that she wasn't really recognized beyond her role but i don't think she's also entitled to be recognized beyond her role either yeah i, I just i think she's she's had a, a lot of hard luck that's come her way and this dude byron is just feeding into every Every single bit of that somehow zach is now the bad guy yeah her judgment is questionable at best guys like uh, here we go i'll go to see dr franklin and get something for your bruises should make them go away by tomorrow they're already gone i can still see them the bruises of my heart the outside <sighs> guys can we please these are the last of the files you wanted doctor thank you just just uh he set drags right there. everything about an episode down there is no recorded history of the high act before about 800 years Confirmed. They're hiding something. Yeah, they're hiding something. But what? Something bad's about to happen to him, isn't it? Hey, you brought lunch. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> oh, look oh damn. Oh, yep. Son. Yep. Damn. Now, do you know what happened? Yes, he was attacked by one of you. For the crime of Ooh. being who he is and what he is. That's not good. He was attacked by one of you. Yeah, that's the problem one of you this is how race wars start you sort people into here's one of us and that's one of you as if sometimes any one of us can be responsible for or control anyone else who is or is not like us in some way like newsflash i can't control everyone out there who's an american or everyone who has brown eyes or everyone who is a, a little fluffy like i i can't do that what category are you going to use to to divide us how are you going to determine what is us versus them is is it well well you're american and they're russian or you're white you're black you're hispanic you have long hair you have short hair it's the war between long hairs and short hairs if you think that's funny go check out the 80s male female gay straight bi binary non-binary trekkies and jedi wannabes there's a whole movie fanboys if you've ever seen it like we're gonna divide along those lines and it's a us versus a them kind of a thing you, you can divide people on anything usually it's on stuff we have absolutely no control over that's how race wars like this start yeah 
Yeah, it's this us versus them mentality. It's not those things that define who you are as a person. It's the choices you make. It's what's on the inside to go back to those old cliches. Like, it's one of you people. Yeah. All right, did you get a description of who did it? No. See, because now he's putting I that blame who was responsible. and responsibility we'll back on that to go after Franklin. My people won't. <laughs> See, yeah, because now you can start beating up people not because they're actually responsible for stuff but just because that they're like someone Byron. <laughs> hold it right there Zach, stop get a med team down here stat mm -hmm. so now all of a sudden we can't just beat people Computer. up on babylon 5 anymore like they're gonna take anything new that. on uh search for hayek records negative results on search if I don't speak to them, something terribly wrong is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, whatever. If I don't speak to them, if I don't speak to them, something bad's gonna happen. If I don't calm them down. All right, check alien records. Cross-reference with Hayek Doe. Include all variant spellings giving hard copy readout. Stand by. Hayek Doe. Do as I tell you, I'll die. Let me see. Can save your time, Karen. Hey, I know your secret. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, uh, uh. uh. No, they're all dead. Is that is that Zathras? Is that Zathras? Are Zathras the the Hayak Doe? Oh, that looks like that might be them. It might not be. That's what it looks like. And if they think they're all dead, but there's still like nine of them down on Epsilon Three, they're not all dead. Cause that's, I mean, my God, that, that could be a Zathras right there. A, a hand-drawn facsimile of it, you know, but still like, that'd be kind of cool. Ugh, some life in this episode. Cause guys, I'm struggling. I'm, I don't know if I told you guys this. I, this is like the third time I've tried to record this video. Like I'm so struggling with this episode. <sighs> All right. Something in your biological makeup is breaking down. You needed the high act didn't you? You needed something in their DNA to keep your species growing through interbreeding. Without it... We are dying. We killed the Hayekdo. And in so doing, we killed ourselves. Wow. It took us a long time to mm. discover the cause, but now we are a dying people unless you help us. No. Wow. You hold us responsible for those who were killed. Yeah. Yes. Even though we ourselves were not yet born develop a means of restoring it on a planetary basis too big of a job to be finished in my lifetime but we could get started oh may not work but he can't he can't do anything but now he can but if you keep this a secret nothing will be done and your yeah. people your race will eventually die out let him go but now that another has discovered our truth we may as well acknowledge it it is too high a price to pay to do otherwise mm. you know I, hold on i want to wait i want to let this scene play out if there's more perhaps someday you may forgive us for what our ancestors did yeah it's not my place to speak for the dead only forgiveness can come from the hayek though too bad they're all dead you know i think there's a real deliberate message here they eliminated an entire other race us versus them sound familiar and now they're paying the price so many years scratch that so many generations later and so i think this is begging the question with the hayek are later generations responsible for the sins of their father fathers forefathers are later generations still responsible for the sins of their forefathers even if they help to cover it up or hide it and then maybe even come clean but it's their shame they're trying to figure it out as best they can she asks the question are we responsible for things that we weren't even born yet it sounds dumb to me i don't know about you guys and here goes dr franklin being better than you all over again of going yeah but you covered it up which makes you an accomplice after the fact and he says I'm, i can't do anything with you and then he does stuff with them like he launches a whole plan as far as how to help them saying it's going to take a while but we can we can do it it's an interesting juxtaposition here though between what's happening with byron and the telepaths and what they're seemingly tried to, trying to do and then what happened in the past with the hayek and the hayek though I, this this is very raw so hopefully i'll have this a little more baked by the time i get to monday but kind of what are, where i'm thinking about this is so byron and the telepaths here are trying to form this us versus them mentality here's what uh you guys have done here's all the stuff that your forefathers put in 
into place regarding telepaths and has made such a hard life for us. He's wanting to move to a spot where he's cutting off contact between the mundanes and the telepaths. He's creating this us first, then we're going to cut off this thing. Turns out they actually, for the Hayek and Hayek, do they needed each other. Do the humans and telepaths need each other? I don't know. We haven't seen that many generations down the line. It's like the Hayek and Hayek do are showing us what where us versus them leads 800 years 1200 years down the road kind of interesting like here's what these guys are trying to do and if you do it here's what it's going to look like at the other side almost redeems this episode for me almost and uh, not quite but almost does though oh look byron's in zip ties they still have zip ties in the future got it i suspect if you had not kept me locked up here all day there might be one less dead body in your morgue please oh try and remember that next time again with the messiah complex if it wasn't for me I could have stopped it all. Oh, look, the Messiah has a private tent, and she walks in. She, he's totally going to bone her. Watch it. Are you sure you're going to be all right? No. It's got a high-voltage sign I in the background. I worked so hard to teach them, Lisa. I wanted so much for them to understand. Feel the heartbreak because you need some and comforting. And continue. They killed that man, Lisa. I legitimately right now don't know if this dude is just so bad of an actor that this seems so fake that he does not really feel like he cares that deeply for these people. It really feels to me like he's just trying to play it up to get in her pants. Like, that's really where I go with this. That's really what this moment feels like is he's he's really trying to just play it up. And he wouldn't be like this if she wasn't there. That's the way this feels to me. So what, so what I'm saying is I wonder, is that the way it's supposed to feel because that's actually what he's doing right now? Or is he just a bad actor? Or is this bad direction, bad writing, bad cinematography? Uh, the, the score has been okay i guess maybe actually better than okay but uh, like like I, I just i can't tell what's what's actually going on here is it is it intentional that it's this bad is it that intentional or not then rest in me even if it's only for a little while rest in me you know i really oh oh there it goes dude she ain't even wearing a bra man there's something you should know before we bone Byron, the vorlons changed me it could burn you then let it burn Told you that's what they were going to do. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Through the sheer. Oh, yep. She's awake. Woohoo! I don't remember that scene. Uh-oh, big black eyes. Is something happening to Lita? Is she, like, turning on right now or something? Oh, ooh. So are those fetuses supposed to be these telepaths? But I don't understand what they're kind of intimate here. That is, that one kind of looks a little more Asian, just like this dude did. So those fetuses are supposed to be the telepaths, and then here they're growing? I don't understand. Are they trying to tell us that the Vorlons created telepaths? That they did stuff? Maybe even in all the races, that the Vorlons created telepaths? Is that? I mean, that would kind of explain why telepaths have a thing, you know, hurt the shadows, I guess. That's weird. That one fetus especially really looked like the dude that it flashed to. Like, maybe the Vorlons, maybe they didn't specifically create each one of those, but as much as they um, started the telepath gene within humans? Or is it the, sh the, the Vorlons who've come in and made telepaths and whenever a person gets pregnant the vorlons decide if that baby is going to be telepath or not and they're the ones who go in and change the baby the, 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 the fetus and so if the vorlons aren't here are there any more telepaths hmm. these people are all peeping toms every single one of them it was the vorlons they created telepaths on a hundred worlds hey they interfered with their genetic development took people from their home worlds and adjusted them over the course of the centuries yes because they needed telepaths in their war against the shadows. Needed hey. us as cannon fodder. Oh, okay. Well, that's... We would be normal. We would have lives. The Vorlons are gone, Byron. There's no one left to settle the score. No, but the other races are still here. Yeah, see, so now he's taking this and he's twisting it. This is what a good cult leader does. Cult of personality, I should say, is they find a person to go against and then they turn everything into their fault. And he says, they made us and used us or, or whatever he said. We were their plaything or something like that. D does Byron not realize that he's also part of the galaxy that the shadows were trying to take over? Which we now know they weren't actually trying to take over. They were just trying to help everybody grow. Turns out the Vorlons really helped evolution come along too, I guess. And it sounds like they're go he's going down this more like hold them responsible for something they didn't actually do. He's going down that path with all this. Turning turning this into, I guess, the war. They have to make it right, Lita. How? We'll force them to make it right. How? By giving us a homeland of our own. We'll ask to speak to the Alliance. 
put our case before them. See if they can be persuaded to do the right thing. And if they can't? Then we'll make sure they have no other choice. I mean, it's not an unreasonable request. It's really not. But it's definitely not healthy. It definitely puts things into a, an us first them type situation. So, ugh. All right, well, that was the episode. I don't know what to do with episodes where I don't like the episode. I, I want to be clear. I'm not a fan of this episode. This episode was just so, ugh, you know? But I do very much appreciate the discussion that it's having. It's not, I mean, anything here with Byron is just so hard to watch right now for me. Am I just biased against him? Like, I just decided I haven't liked him, and I'm not going to like him no matter what he does, or is he just that bad? But it's disgusting what he's doing. Hey, listen, you guys tune in on Monday. I don't know. We'll see what Jeff has to say about this episode as well. Maybe he gets something out of it. I didn't. Maybe he enjoyed it. Maybe he hates it just as much as I do. I hate. Hate's a strong word. I don't really hate it. I just don't enjoy it. Anyway, you guys make sure you join us on Monday. And while you're here, please like, subscribe, share the video. Head over to patreon.com slash Babylon 5 first to get all the behind the scenes footage that we do over there. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to get out of here. I got to think on this one. I really got to think on this one. I got to let this one bake for a little bit because I do think that there's something really neat about about the Hayak, the Hayak Doe, and then what Byron's doing with his folks right here. Because I think they should serve as a warning to what Byron's trying to do. I'm going to get out of here. You guys take care. We'll see you next time.